Shalom. This is Les Lawrence with Elijah Vision Ministries. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank a video version. <laughs> if you're in the uh, Raleigh Wake Forest area, you're welcome to join us on sunny nights every week for our live version, which is about an hour and a half. This is a 20 minute or so version, but we're glad to have you with us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you're restoring Israel as you promised in these last days because you gave your word and it was an unconditional promise that you would uh, restore and bless Israel eternally. So we thank you for that. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we pray for rain in the time of latter rain. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, glad to have you with us. Beautiful little uh, view of the sunset in, uh, down in Florida when we were down there last spring. Um, I always like to point you to my blog. You can find it at ElishaVision.com. ElishaVision.com. That's Elisha with an S. Uh, and uh, I did two of them, both uh, showing an Old Testament concepts that most Christians think are only in the New Testament. First one was the idea of being grafted in, uh, like my little graphic there. By the way, this, this uh, menorah with the fish connection, making a Jewish star in the middle, the Star of David, is, uh, was actually found in a first century uh, synagogue in Israel, proving that there were Messianic believers even at that time, Jews who believed in Jesus, and they used that as a symbol uh, in a mosaic on the floor. Pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, the idea of being grafted in, of course, comes from, uh, from in the New Testament. We read about that in, in uh, Romans 11. But look at this verse in, uh, in Isaiah. I believe it's Isaiah here. Uh, 14, verse 1. But Jehovah will have mercy on the descendants of Jacob. He will choose Israel as his special people once again. He will bring them back to settle once again in their own land. And people from many different nations will come and join them there and unite with the people of Israel. And this, uh, uh, my friend uh, Nehemiah Gordon, uh, uh, a Hebrew scholar, explains that that word of join them there, join, is actually... A word that means grafted. So it's talking about people from various nations being grafted into Israel and actually will move to Israel and, and join them there in Israel. That's pretty cool. Of course, the New Testament verses from Romans 11, verse 17. If some of the branches are broken off and you being a wild olive tree, speaking of the Gentiles or former Gentiles, were grafted in among them and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Do not boast against the branches, but if you do boast, Remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. And, uh, and then the verse 24 in the same Romans 11, uh, talking to Israel, if you are cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and, or excuse me, that's still talking to uh, Gentiles, ex-Gentiles, uh, and if you're cut out of the olive tree, which is wild, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree. So there's the promise of, of uh, the broken off branch of the Jews being grafted back in to the root. And of course, uh, the whole thing about Old Testament uh, and New Testament concepts and realizing that everything in the New Testament have its, has its roots in the old is why I believe in Jewish roots. So I did another one this week called uh, Priesthood of Believers, an Old Testament con concept also. And I start with this little, I don't know if you can read the caption there. It's Jesus talking to a modern young man. He says, no, I'm not talking about Twitter. I literally want you to follow me. <laughs> and, uh, of course, following Jesus means we, we enter into the ministry of Jesus. And one of the sayings I like to say a lot is, uh, every Christian is a minister, no exceptions. And so the priesthood of believer, which is, uh, commonly thought of as a New Testament concept uh, in First Peter and especially in Revelation uh, where it says uh, Jesus is the firstborn from the dead ruler over the kings of the earth to him who loved us and, and, was, and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father to him be glory and dominion forever. So the idea of all believers being a kingdom of priests or kings and priests uh, is clearly established in the New Testament. But did you know that it actually goes all the way back to Exodus 19? 
God's actual purpose and intention on Mount Sinai is spoken in verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you'll speak to the children of Israel. Now, unfortunately, um, Israel at that time rejected that offer or that intent of God. And they were terrified because of God's appearance on the mountain with lightning and thunder and earthquakes and all of that. And uh, they were so terrified, they said to Moses, we don't want to hear God from God ourselves. You go talk to him and you tell us what he wants. And uh, so the concept uh, of, of a priesthood of the nation was actually revealed there. They just rejected it. And it's all the way now to modern times where we're still praying that we'd see the priesthood of all believers. And, uh, and I like to point out the other thing that, that happened there is that because they rejected each of them being ministers and priests before God uh, and chose to have a man go to God and hear from God and then come tell them. That was the beginning of the religious hierarchy of all the religions of the world. Uh, they think they have to have uh, organization and men and leaders over them and, and it's more of a uh, human system than it is the purpose of God. God's want all believers to serve him. Well, let's go on to the news. Uh, Netanyahu made a great statement this week. Uh, he said, God has given us great opportunity. Uh, a people who are almost destroyed, merci merci mercilessly slaughtered. This nation, Israel, today heads strong, robust, prosperous country. Uh, first of all, by the power of faith. Boy, isn't that wonderful to have a leader of any nation, and especially Israel, say that the number one issue is, is faith in God. Hallelujah. Bless Netanyahu as he runs for re-election in just a couple more weeks, three weeks. Well, big news uh, going on just this weekend. Israeli jets struck in Syria to thwart an attack by Iranian killer drones. The army says it carried out airstrikes near Damascus to foil an imminent um, uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard plot to hit sites inside Israel with unmanned drones armed with explosives. And... Um, and this, this was a serious attack or plan, but is, Israel uh, struck preemptively. In the, in the attack near Damascus, five terrorists were reportedly killed after Israel thwarts the imminent attack. It was the Quds Force, the actual Iranian Revolutionary Guard Force and Shiite militias that they were attacking. And uh, that's a very serious uh, issue that Israel discovered and then preemptively uh, shot it down. Here's a couple pictures. Israel's, uh, these are two different drones, Israel's drone and the Iranian drone. And Israel's army chief says that Soleimani masterminded the thwarted drone attack and, he, and said, we're ready for all contingencies. Soleimani is the head of the Revolutionary Guard of Iran, and he's uh, personally uh, overseeing this operation where they intended to attack Israel. The IDF chief says Iranian commander personally oversaw the attack. And, uh, and then there's a picture of a uh, satellite picture of some of the places they hit near Damascus, destroying drones and other am ammunitions. One of the um, one of the ministers of the Knesset in Israel uh, said that after Israel preempts the drone, he, after they did the attacks, he says, Iran is now directly confronting us. In other words, it's not just through their proxies. This was Iran themselves with their own drones and their own military force that was preparing to attack Israel from Syria. And uh, it's a serious es escalation. Um, and then just today, three rockets were fired at Israel from Gaza. We see that happening quite frequently again lately. And uh, the Iron Dome intercepted two of them, and one of them fell into uh, an unpopulated area. Uh, but that was just today. Uh, and then earlier this week, uh, Weapons warehouses and missiles were attacked in Iraq, and most observers believe this was Israel attacking, uh, not not just in Israel and in Syria and so forth, but all the way over here uh, near Baghdad in Iraq, and uh, and again the, the the target that was hit uh, was not the Iraqis; it was Iranian uh, warehouses of weapons and so forth and missiles in Iraq. And uh, in fact, Netanyahu says. Uh, we can hit you wherever you try to uh, form your your attack. Uh, Jerusalem Post has an article here of um, 
Israeli satellite, well, I can get to the top of it here, uh, the Israeli satellite uh, imaging shows how Iran's land bridge is under attack. And I wanted to show you this uh, map here because the intent, here's what they bombed. Here, I don't know if you can see on this map, this is a broad map of the Middle East. Here's Iran way over here, Iraq, Jordan, Syria, here's Israel. And, uh, and what's happening is that uh, Iran is attempting to get control of all this territory so they can have a place on the Mediterranean, have a base on the Mediterranean. They already have some troops stationed there now, and they want to connect it. So Israel keeps hitting this land bridge uh, to break up what Iran's trying to build there in terms of control. And uh, make no mistake about it, Iran is the most dangerous uh, force in the Middle East right now to, to uh, attack peace. Uh, also this week, there was a terrible... Uh, attack of a young family in Israel, a father and his two teenage uh, boy and girl. The girl was killed, the, and, and they were visiting just a tourist uh, a place, a, a, a nature hike to a spring, and, and uh, a very sophisticated attack. There was an actual IED planted on the path that was triggered when the girl got near it. Actually, it might have been triggered by people in a distance that that saw them coming up and they triggered it. But anyway, uh, this again is an escalation within Israel, uh, in actually in Samaria. It's called the West Bank. Samaria in Israel considers it a part of Israel. Here's a view of the area. It was a pretty area. Uh, but uh, Deb Kafal calls it back to the Second Intifada and Palestinian remote control bombs. And they have no leads at this time to the kill, killer terrorists. The girl was buried uh, I believe it was yesterday. Um, Palestinian officials say the West Bank attack indicates uh, a highly organized cell. And uh, this is pretty serious. Uh, like I said, it's not just a, a one person with a knife trying to attack somebody, but this was an actual very well organized cell. And, and uh, the uh, son was, was injured quite severely, but he's now improving and the father is going to be fine. The girl was killed, 17-year-old. Terrible thing. Um, Middle East Media Research Institute has a recent translation of a speech by Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, uh, where he says, We will enter Jerusalem as millions of fighters. We reject the designation of our martyrs as terrorists. They are martyrs of the homeland, and not a single penny from their money will be deducted. They are the most sacred thing, sacred thing we have. Speaking of these terrorists, just awful. There's a video, which I won't try to show, but uh, of a boss. And, and uh, he says, every house you have built on our land is bound to be destroyed. And if you go to uh, memory.org, um, M-E-M-R-I.org, you can see this report. There's reports of the different things he has said. And, uh, and you can watch the video or see that. Anyway, we'll go on. Uh, Meanwhile, Israel plans to help Palestinians leave the Gaza Strip. Tens of thousands of Gazans already have left of their own accord and leave every year. Israel wants to help increase that number and actually make uh, provisions in other Arab countries for Palestinians not, not to just escape and be in, in kind of a no man's land in another country, and, but actually be accepted as citizens. And Israel's working on this to... That, that, to me, is going to be the best solution for Gaza. Let the, let the good guys, so to speak, that don't want to be part of the, the rebellion, let them uh, get, out of, get out of Dodge, so to speak. Uh, here's a story in Israel today, too young to kill. There's a debate in Israel when, the, when the, uh, uh, it, the terrorist is under the age of 18, should the Israeli soldiers kill them? And here again, I won't show you this, but this video shows two young boys, or I think 16 and 17, not that young, but coming through this, this doorway into the old city and with knives, and they actually, it shows them stabbing a couple of the soldiers. And then the soldiers uh, pull out their weapons and kill them. And so there's a debate about whether or not, you, you know, can you be too young to kill? And the point is that at the point of hand-to-hand -hand combat, it becomes kill or be killed. And uh, so I don't think there's really a, a debate there, in my opinion. Palestinian Authority says Israel's encouragement of Gaza 
emigration is extremely dangerous. That, what I was just referring to, Israel encouraging Gazans to leave Gaza. And they say, that's dangerous. <laughs> well, it's not dangerous for the ones leaving. They're escaping and, and saving their lives. And I'm all for Israel encouraging them to leave. Uh, meanwhile, on the political level, uh, Netanyahu says that Lieberman has joined, has joined the left by signing a vote-sharing deal. There's still a lot of political shenanigans going on with only three weeks till the election in Israel again. And, and, uh, and Lieberman is, is really, the I think, uh, doing the exact opposite of God's purpose. And he's really an enemy, I think, to the Israel, to what God is doing in Israel. And anyway, he's now made a vote-sharing deal with the leftists. He always claimed to be a conservative, but now he's kind of his true colors are exposed. And uh, polls still say he may win uh, nine or ten seats, but I'm praying that he will actually fail and fall so bad in the next three weeks that he won't even get uh, enough seats to be in the Knesset. I know that's a big order, but that's what I'm praying for. And I'm praying that Netanyahu will be reelected. Here's an interesting little commentary on Drybone's cartoon. Maybe Netanyahu used to be condemned for having bad relationships with America's president, speaking of Obama. He's now being criticized for having good relationships with American president. Of course, that's going on in the political realm. And, uh, and Israel Haom has a story for Trump. Hurting Israel means hurting America. And he's right about that because the Bible says, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. So if we turn against Israel, then America will suffer. That's, that's the Bible, folks. <laughs> uh, I didn't make it up, and I'm just quoting what God says. Um, Depkefile says, uh, ex uh, explains about a Russian-Turkish air dogfight over North Syria that was narrowly avoided, uh, and Erdogan defies Putin. So keep in, keep in mind, you have to sort of keep a roster of all the different combatants there in the, around Syria. But here's a potential conflict between Turkey and Putin or Russia. And, uh, and that's not all, but uh, NATO... Uh, member Turkey, Erdogan of Turkey, is accused of aiding Mideast jihadists. And uh, there's been quite a bit of evidence of him allowing that. Even way back with ISIS, he was allowing ISIS uh, people to move through Turkey and also funds and arms for ISIS. So uh, he's a very devious and, and uh, uh, evil dictator, I believe, uh, of that Islamic Republic of Turkey. So stay tuned to that. And then here's a biblical commentary. It's, different in different translations, but uh, this particular translation, Job 12, 24 says, he dep God deprives the world's leaders of reason and makes them wander in a trackless wasteland. And I think that's a pretty good commentary on the fact that the leaders seem unreasonable. That's because God is actually orchestrating things. The leader of Chechnya says Jews are the enemy and sort of backs up his words with uh, effect because they've just inaugurated Europe's largest mosque. It'll hold 30,000 people inside this mosque. You see the picture? And then another 70,000 outside in the gardens around in Chechnya, which is part of the part of Russia. And then uh, Tlaib been in the news, of course, anti-Semitic remarks and Israel wouldn't let her come into Israel. Uh, and it says she is now attempting to raise funds based on her canceled trip to Israel. Surprise, surprise, huh? <laughs> and then one final little good story. Israeli dates are sought even by Arab countries. The date harvest in Israel has begun. Dates have replaced citrus fruits and peppers as one of Israel's top agricultural exports. Um, I believe the story goes on to say that something like 60% of the dates, yeah, there it is. Today, Israel supplies about 60% of the global market for medjool dates, which are considered the highest quality dates and are most in demand. We see Israeli dates in our stores right here in North Carolina. Well, praise God for what he's doing all over the world, especially in Israel. Uh, we, we'll just close in prayer. Father, thank you for your faithfulness to Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and, and that the name of Jehovah God would be declared and restored and, and his son, your son, Yeshua ben Jehovah, Jesus, the son of God. In his name we pray. Amen. Shalom, shalom.